Hey, hey, everyone. I'm just going to give people a minute to hop in. Yo. I realized in my nervousness to uh, get this thing going that uh, I did a typo in the in the title. Whoops. I can fix that. All right. Okay, it's 11.30. People are starting to hop in now. Um, okay. So, yes, my name is Cody Sherman. I am a woodcut printmaker. I also, uh, mainly, I am an artist mentor, and I am a AmeriCorps member serving at Art Force Iowa. And my main art source here, uh, as I've already said, is printmaking. Specifically woodcut printmaking. So I've already done a chunk of the work already. My image isn't completely done. There's some things I still want to figure out. Um, but what I have here so far is I have a possum hanging from a tree branch and he's got a drink. Now this is a commission for uh, a local business. So, you know, want to make sure, as with all my other stuff, want to make sure I do a good job. And even though things are delayed right now, you know, probably not going to be able to release this for a couple months. Um, you know, I figure why not get started, get it going. So, I've already got my base drawing done. And I've outlined things in Sharpie so that they're easier to see. Now, sometimes I'll use paint, or in this case, I'm using this green marker. And what I will do is I'll just go over the Sharpie, just kind of like that. I don't know how well that's going to translate on the camera. Is that... Oh, yeah, you can see it. Okay, so what this marker does is it helps me see what I have and have not carved away. So I'm just going to fill in some of the areas I think I'm going to be able to get to today. Yes, hello everyone hopping in. Welcome to Artful Connections. We've been receiving artwork through the week of uh, what people have been working on, and it's it's really great to see. We love seeing everyone in the community being able to uh, create during this time. All right, so my two main tools that I use are these two. I don't know which camera to show it in. These two. So these are my two main ones. One is called a V groove, uh, because obviously because of the shape, it is a V. This is great for straight lines, line work kind of stuff, like, see if I... so there, you can kind of see right there, I just made a straight line with that. And then my other is a, a, a U gouge, get it in focus, um, U, it's, it's just pretty much a scoop. This is great for clearing out large areas, like, like that, and you can see how the marker helps me see there where I have carved it out. So, the goal here 
is to remove everything that I don't want to print. So, you know, think of it like a giant wooden stamp. Here, I have an example right here. So here's one. This is probably one of my more popular designs. Um, how do I get this to show right side up? Okay. So this design, his name is Mitch. He's one of my earlier designs. Um, and so Mitch, he's obviously, he's had a bit of ink on him already at this point. Uh, after he is all inked up, you know, he's already carved out. You can see the raised surfaces. After he's carved out and inked up, I put him through what is called an etching press. It's essentially a, it's a press with two steel rollers and a bed that goes in between. And it just helps to smash everything together with a ton of pressure. So after that happens, it would look something like this. Boom, there it is. So that's what this plate looks like once it's inked up and printed onto a surface. In this case, it was paper. Now, predominantly what I do, um, I do paper every once in a while, but my main focus lately has been, and I say lately, the past like five, six years now, uh, has been printing on t-shirts. So I'm actually wearing that, that same shirt right now. And I've had this for a few years, so the quality of the print, it stays dark. Uh, I use good, high-quality ink. And it's a little bit different than screen printing. It's more of a, you know, with the relief process, a lot of the shirts end up being, you know, there's some uniqueness to it. You see the grain of the wood show up throughout. Um... You know, sometimes it'll be a little bit messier than others, but it adds character to it. It doesn't look, I wouldn't necessarily say it looks messy. It probably wasn't the best word to use, but I don't know. They're definitely unique. So, um, all right. So I'm going to stop talking as much and I'll get to my carving here. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm working on. So, and a lot of, this one is very heavy textured, um, a little bit more than I normally do, but I just wanted to try to maybe step out of my comfort zone a little bit. This is definitely going to take a while to get through, and I have a special way that I do my hair texture. Um, you can kind of see on my, on that last one here, I'll pop them up again. Whoop. Uh, so the hair... I have, it's like these repeating triangles, but then I include just kind of gestural no, lines. A lot, of the, a lot of the stuff isn't even planned. I just go in with my carving tool and make it up as I go. All right, so let me get some of this stuff out of the way. Please, if anybody has any questions, feel free to feel free to chat. Uh, I have the chat up; I can see them. Um, or if you just want to tell me how's it going, or if you have any suggestions for this plate, I'm still not quite done yet. I can't decide. Is all the way down here. I can't decide if I want the mouth open or not. I did have him with like this, this smug little smile going on. So here. So he's just kind of got this smug smile going on. But I can't decide if I... I thought about maybe opening up his mouth so you can see like some pointy teeth. Um, but uh... Yeah, still haven't decided yet. What kind of wood do I use? So, traditionally for relief printmaking, you would use a hardwood, like a cherry or a sheena plywood. I use, some people call this cheating, <laughs> but I use a, uh, it's MDF, or a medium density fiberboard, 
a lot of pre-made furniture is made out of this. So a lot of the furniture you could get from like Target, Ikea, just any of those big box stores. Uh, if you ever got a, like a bookshelf or anything from there, it's probably made out of a similar material. You can kind of see, um, you know, it doesn't have a grain to it. And that's one of the biggest draws is that since it doesn't have that kind of, it doesn't have that grain, I don't have to worry about the wood chipping uh, and losing some detail. Now, it's also decently soft, so it's easier to carve than a traditional wood. But since it is so soft, it dulls out my tools pretty quick. And so I have to keep a uh, this on hand. This is called a slip strap. I don't have my, uh, I left it over there, but I don't have my, uh, you put like a honing compound on it. And so then what you do is what you can see all the leftover metal from, I've used it so many times. You have your carving tool and your honing compound on this on this tool here and you just drag it across and what this does is helps keep your edges nice and clean and sharp and i got some leather on the back you can also see this has been used a few times all this leftover metal that's on the back here again you're just dragging it across and it helps give it like a like a mirror shine that you're probably not going to be able to see on camera but you can just see over here on the tip here it's kind of got a shine to it and that means it's sitting all right now i've used these a lot uh i've had these tools for a couple years they're probably they are way past their prime so definitely need to get them resharpened or even just replace them at this point but they're doing all right You definitely always want to be careful though uh, with tools that aren't quite as sharp you know you never I mean you know is you don't want to be carving towards your hand anyway because that's when you're gonna slip and gouge yourself but uh, dull tools they tend to skip and it puts you at even more risk sorry I keep on looking over here all my camera setups over here the cameras right there <laughs> So I'm going to do my best to do as I say and not carve towards my hand. I have a bad habit of it and when I'm teaching this I'm a big stickler on people not doing it too. So you can kind of see already this image is starting to pop out from that green. Oh and I'm sorry. Um, what kind of uh, where do you get it? You can get this wood just from anywhere, uh, anywhere, like any kind of like big hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's. It's decently cheap. I get four foot by eight foot boards for uh, usually under 40 bucks. And from there, I cut them down to the size I need and go from there. I don't know if anyone noticed here, but it is prime nap time for my cat. Which, hold on, let me, oh, oh, there he is. And sorry about the windows in the background. It's kind of messing up my white balance, but I don't have my regular green screen set up yet.
Okay, I gotta remember. Gotta show the camera. <laughs> Alright, so getting these edge details done. I like to work around my block, so I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I might work on this hand a little bit too in a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and color in this hand. There we go. All right. Yeah, all this tiny detail is going to take me quite some time, but I'll get her. I usually have a habit of naming my blocks just uh, it, usually it's like a story that happens while I were while I was carving it or after I'm done trying to think of a name of something and then something just happens to me so like the the Mitch plate I showed you he's got a little bit of a story in that he was at that drawing oh wait, here hold on uh, are there any other materials you can, you can have a card for prints before Uh, so yeah, I have used a Sheena before. I've, I've also used Cherry, just, I've tried out Cherry. I haven't used it a whole lot, but it's been years since I've done those. So uh, they, they are definitely tougher. Um, but the image you get is a little, it's hard to describe, but it, it's a little bit different from those traditional woods. The, the care of them is a little bit different too, where normally you would probably want to protect your plate with you know, some sort of shellac. I usually just use my ink. <laughs> I, I let my ink soak into the board and that's why they're so messy. Uh, it just keeps it protected. Uh, the, the ink I use is oil-based, so it creates a good seal after it's dry. Um, where was, oh, the, uh, the, the Mitch story though, Mitch. Mitch was actually based off of a stuffed animal that, I don't even know what we call an animal, a stuffed monster? Um, oop, did I freeze here? Uh, am I still going? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. My screen kind of froze. Oh, wait, I think I'm back. Okay, sorry about that. I mess with one thing and it goes, and it goes weird. But so Mitch, uh, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. Here, I'll throw up Mitch while I am talking about him. Boom, there he is one more time. So Mitch, I'm gonna make him smaller, put him over here. Oh, weird. So, Mitch, he was... The drawing was based off a very rough uh, sewing project of this mon the stuffed monster I made. And the monster did... Like, I didn't have a name for him at all. But I had some nephews that loved to... Uh, cuddle up to him and so we just called him we're like oh yeah he's the cuddle buddy and it was just like this cute innocent thing so i was like okay his name's cuddle buddy sure and i did a workshop at the at the art center and this dude never met before he was sitting next to me and this girl comes up and i'm also and i'm working on at this i, I took a it was a screen printing sh class so I was taking the screen printing class and decided just to use the same design. And she's like, oh, what's the name of your design? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. Cuddle Buddy? And she's like, oh, okay. And she walks away, like, totally innocent exchange. And the dude was like, 
oh man, Cuddle Buddy? You could have said anything. You could have said, like, his name was Mitch, and it would have been cooler than that. She was really cute. And I was like, okay, his name's Mitch. I don't care. And so it's stuck ever since. <laughs> this one, however, does not have a name. I will be taking suggestions in the chat, along with any and all art projects that you all been working on during this time. Love seeing what you all have been creating, especially during these artful connections. I think it's really cool what Art Force has been putting on during this time. I hope you're all washing your hands too. His tail a little bit. Now me, I like to I like to rotate my board a lot, so to get that the good angle I need on it. And I have this thing I'm, it's sitting on right now. This thing it's called a it's called a bench hook. It just kind of helps my board from sliding all over the place. I also tend to use my boards to take notes, so stuff for work that I need <laughs> lately. Since I'm working from home. I tried to turn on some uh, some fancy royalty-free music for the background. I don't know if you all can hear it, but it is there for your royalty-free pleasure. Yeah. Let me go to the Possum Park. Was that the uh, the Possum Park? Wasn't that kind of like the Chuck E. Cheese thing? Didn't they have... I know they had like mascots and people playing in a band. Could probably use that for a reference. <laughs> So then here, when I have like, so there I did some line work. So when I have chunks of areas I need carved out, that's usually when I switch to my U gouge. See this one here. Do the, like, oops, but like the makeup tutorial, like, and now I'm using the U gouge. so it pops out so you can see it. Yeah, I'm slacking on drawing the branch that he's hanging from. I'm uh, not the best at drawing wood, which is... Is that coincidence? Irony? I don't know. I always confuse the two. There we 
There we go. Yep, you can definitely see it starting to pop out there. How deep do I need to carve? Um, so depth depends on depth depends on how clean I want the image to print. The deeper I carve, the less likely there will be wood grain showing up on the final print. So the well, there it is. Oh, here we go. The Mitch print down here in this corner. He was carved pretty deep. And so that's why his print shows up so clean. And a lot of people end up mistaking them for screen prints in that case. Lately, I've been carving mine, I'd probably say just like a medium. So, so that maybe a little bit of that wood grain pops out. Uh, I have found, when I was, I went to Iowa State for integrated studio arts. And while I was there, I was taught that you want to keep your prints as clean as possible and if any wood grain shows up that that is not as great but now that I'm out of college and people are buying these on shirts people love that wood grain and I don't mind leaving a little bit in so yeah I carve them just you know not as deep definitely not as deep as I used to but medium height just so a little bit peeks out Sometimes I'll do them pretty shallow and they look pretty chaotic, but that's where I am at with that right now. So here, I'm just going to hide that again. Bye, Mitch. All right, so let's work on some of this hair detail. I like to wear a hat while I'm working on these live streams because otherwise you just see the top of my head constantly because I'm always like hunched over looking at the thing. So it's like, hey, you know, I'm like my own billboard, Toaster Press. on camera a little bit so you can see the tips of the hair that are starting to come out now everything that I've described about how I carve I completely go against that while I'm doing the hair uh, like I said a lot of it's gestural and so the green is just kind of there to help me see after I'm done with this I'll go back through and 
I'll go back through and recover everything with black so that then you can kind of see the <laughs> so that then you can see the texture lo-fi beats the carve print too definitely um this is chill relaxing lo-fi hip-hop copy copy free low frequency music rolls right off the tongue Okay, you know what? Let's uh, let's work on this hand. A lot of people, so the same idea. A lot of people are more familiar, or maybe they have done it before, where they did something like this in school, but they used a material called linoleum. Uh, there's also a. a, a I don't know how newer it is, but there's another material called like just like an easy carve. Easy carve is essentially it. It feels like an eraser that you're carving into. Uh, linoleum is exactly what it sounds like. It's it's just a a hunk of linoleum that usually they mount to boards made out of this. Linoleum is even easier yet to, to carve out of. Some some people prefer it because of that. I personally I'm not a fan of linoleum. Um, I definitely like the the feel and the texture of wood better. And here I'm going to show you. So, since a lot of my a lot of my designs are kind of character base or portraits, I end up with a lot of blank space around the outside. And you know, I wasn't quite planning on doing this on stream, but I'm going to do it. So, in order to get rid of this big chunk out here. I don't know why I didn't go to the edge. So in order to get rid of this big chunk out here, excuse me, I could continue to use my regular carving tools but I like to use this giant dude. <laughs> uh, so this giant thing here. And I just go in and make sure that I'm good and anchored down. And shake all my cameras. Good anchored down. And I'll just go through and just remove big old honks of wood. Now normally before I get to this part I would have like traced my design so I'm not risking <laughs> running into it and carving it up but for example's sake this is fine. close how's the cat doing is he still asleep oh, 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 wait where's it Oop. favorite part of the printmaking process um gosh I don't know that's hard I would say the carving but 
it's almost like I'm really excited when I start a carving and then halfway through I'm like I just want this to be done so I can print it <laughs> and gosh I don't know I you know I just I really enjoy the whole process in that me personally I don't like having favorites people will ask me like oh what's your favorite food what's your favorite color I don't really I don't like to have favorites of things what I love about printmaking is that is, is how versatile it is yeah it's it, it's carved out of wood so there's only so much manipulation you can do to the board but from there as long as you can fit it through the press without it breaking the board whatever you're printing on or the press you can print on like anything and it's just exciting to find new things to print on and yeah especially you know depending on what i print on my it could have like a totally different meanings behind it too like i've done some like old ripped up torn canvases that have made it look like uh almost some prints that i put on it made it look like almost a could have been like a propaganda poster in that like hey a lot of my designs are smiley and happy it's like hey be happy but it's all uh, nasty and stained and shredded and yeah just just gives a different look or when you print it on like a kid's t-shirt it's oh it's a cute it's a cute kid's character that's that's cute so you know it's just being able to manipulate an image that's just it's stiff and made out of wood but still being able to just mold it how you want to i don't know i don't know if that made any sense at all or why i'm using this giant carving tool for that little bit right there So, I just went over it the first time. This area is still pretty shallow. I realize it's probably hard to see depth on the camera. But I'll go back over it a few times. Especially with this. I'll go over it with this carving tool just to give it maybe a little bit of, of that grain texture. How many blocks have I broken before? I have only broken... <sighs> Two or three. Mitch is almost on his way out. Um, he's my oldest one, but he's then he survived. He's not the oldest. He's next to oldest. But he has survived a long time. And predominantly what breaks boards is pressure so if you have too much pressure going into a press it'll just shatter your wood so i got a little overzealous one time and i put way too much pressure and so you can see the wood has it's it's starting to come apart so it's still usable i just got to keep an eye on it i try to fill it with wood glue every so often and like smash it back together but uh yeah his days might be numbered um i'm gonna go ahead grand theft auto chill hop no thanks that might not be great for this stream okay <laughs> and yes you can make copies so essentially what you would do is you would make your best attempt. Sometimes you'd have to print it by hand rather than put it through a press. Print onto a piece of paper and then use that paper and put it on another block. And then while the ink is still wet, you would uh, smash that paper up against a new block. And essentially you have an, your image copied onto a new surface. 
that then you would go again and carve it out. Now, will it be exactly the same? Probably not, just because of the way carving works and having to, you know, the way that you remove areas might not be the same as you would did it the first time. So there will be some differences. Now, people ask me all the time about buying my boards, and I can't. Oh, if I sell my board, I can't make any more prints. So, unfortunately, I can't sell those. But what I have decided to do, I, I was supposed to have a show going up at a local brewery, which this is what this commission is for. It was supposed to be going up at a local brewery, and I was going to make duplicates of boards. I did make duplicates of boards to sell, but uh, I have no idea how long that's going to be delayed for, given everything. I want everyone to stay safe and healthy, so that's just something I can't worry about just right now. But if you are interested in buying a board like this when, after it's carved out, those may be for sale post quarantine <laughs> I keep on saying I'm gonna go down here and work on the hand but I haven't I haven't I've just been talking a bunch Here we go. Sorry, I was trying to find something without words in it. Of course I find something else with words in it. pop this bad boy out of here oh I guess I didn't even answer the, the middle bit what do I do in the case that they break uh, I mentioned I you know I can do my best to glue them but um, Usually after they break, I, I retire them. I have had brand new boards break right away. Uh, some, so I've been doing the 8035 Music Festival for the past... Well, I did, I've done it five years in a row. Um, I applied to be a part of it this year, but given how things are, uh, we'll see what happens. But... I usually try to do a board to go with the theme of of the of the of the music festival. So one year it was what was it? Oh, it was like the, the, the theme was musical equipment and like electronics coming alive. So I made a monster record player and I printed a bunch of them on these nice lightweight tank tops 
and after I had all my tank tops printed, I switched to my heavyweight cotton t-shirts and just and I didn't adjust the pressure at all and it was just the change in the thickness of the fabric it was enough to just snap that board nearly in half now I made that I made that board stretch out all the way to the end of it but uh, yeah I don't think I've printed them since <laughs> You can see that hand starting to come out. All right, we got a little bit less than 15 minutes left. Uh, if you're still in the chat, thank you for watching. I appreciate you giving me an art force your time on this Friday uh, almost afternoon this Friday lunchtime which I don't know what y'all uh, opinions are on ordering takeout at this time, but man, I I, I haven't ordered anything, but ugh, I miss burritos, and I don't have burrito supplies here. I could really use a burrito. <laughs> I think this is the first time I have ever carved in the place where I'm currently living and I realize now that I have carpets now so I'm definitely gonna have to vacuum but that's no problem worst things have happened You know, another thing I love about woodcut printmaking is that since it is made out of wood, I've seen some people do some cool stuff with their blocks after they're done. So I've seen people attach a bunch of their blocks together and make furniture out of it, like tables or like display counters, even things like that for their booths. Uh, I, when I was in college, I mentioned how cheap these boards are, but I but I was even cheaper in college. <laughs> so in college, the architects would always they'd make models of their buildings and apply them to or attach them to whole four foot by eight foot blocks of this wood. After they were done with their presentation, they would just go down to the basement where uh, studio arts people were hidden and chuck them in the dumpster down there that was outside in the, in the loading dock. Me and my good buddy John, we would always check the dumpster every day and if they did have one of those boards out there, we'd hop in the dumpster, <laughs> take the board off scrape all those buildings off of it and reuse it for our art and i have made some of my best pieces <laughs> in college on those boards that were considered trash all right i realized
guys it's probably not the best viewing angle here I'm gonna move some stuff around to give you a better shot there we go So yeah, uh, I had one vote for mouth open, which I'm kind of leaning towards too, but everyone in the chat, if I get your, are we thinking, so I just got him with this smug little smile on his face, but I was actually thinking of open up, opening up his mouth, it's behind my head, opening up the mouth to show like a bunch of like teeth and he's kind of like a hey, but I'd love to know what you all think in the chat. Yeah, is there anything else that you guys miss at home? That you just, you might necessarily have access to now? I know a lot of people are just like, I hate being inside all day. I found out that my lifestyle is considered quarantine. My life hasn't really changed all that much, although I don't get to see my awesome coworkers <laughs> every day. I guess other than the fact that, uh, I mean, adjusting to working at home has been an experience. <laughs> but, you know, we're making it work. And I think, again, I said this earlier, but I think what Art Force is doing, I miss going to ramen shops, oh, yeah, for sure. I think what Art Force is currently doing is just, it's it is definitely needed at this time. And I just love them as an organization in general. Because let me tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm serving there through AmeriCorps. And AmeriCorps is not going to make me rich and famous anytime soon. So are definitely worth that worth that time I'll have a bunch of links at the end of the stream <laughs> yeah one of my coworkers is supposed to teach me how to make uh, baking kimchi rice sometime. One of my coworkers that's probably watching this video. I say one of my coworkers who might also be my boss. <laughs> but no. Yeah, no, I miss everyone, but it's, you know, it's what we got to do. And that is totally fine. I'm cool bumming around my house if that means everyone stays safe and healthy. Oop. Oh, wrong way. Everyone gets to see my dorky keyboard. about five minutes left so if you got any last minute questions comments concerns uh like how i was just carving towards my hand like in the beginning of the video how i said you shouldn't please let me know now i'm gonna clean this up a bit you know what no i think i might eh, i'll just do this little bit right here
Yes, please. I had no one answer me. Should, I, should we open up the possum's mouth and show some, show some teeth? You just gotta smile right now. Anyone else, please. Should he open his mouth? Let me know. Yep, I agree. I, I think that it would probably show a little bit more character. Pop out some of the hair down here. Yep, this is definitely going to take a while. Yo, we got another yes. Open them open that mouth. Show them teeth. start to see it coming out. Alright. It is almost time. Here, I want to... I'll show you what I'm going for with the... Find my mouse. What I'm going for with the, with the hair detail. If you're not familiar with my work... Um... So, let's see, here we go. Pretty similar to this. Oh man, it's gonna be huge, hold on. <laughs> there we go. So really, I'm just pulling out the edges of the, of the hair. Um, I can't point at it, I'm stuck in this little box. But whoop, uh, the detail in the hair, you can kind of see, I just, I trace out the edges of it uh, just to give them that, that furry look. And this one's called Eugene. Uh, the, he's named after my grandpa. I modeled his boots after him. Or after my grandpa's work boots. And my grandpa's, my grandma makes really great pie. So, hence the pie. But, <laughs> so yeah, that's what the hair should look like eventually uh this the, the one on this image is a lot bigger than what will be in my final image with this possum but but yeah so all right uh i think that just about does it and so wrapping up please if you haven't visit art force iowa art force um they have updates, or uh, if you're not aware of what we're currently doing while we're all in this, like, quarantine time, uh, they have a great write-up post about that. Um, my details, uh, I have a really old, outdated website, toasterpress.com. I'm also, the best place would probably be to follow me on Instagram. I have a Facebook page, Toaster Press, just, if you Google Toaster Press, and it's not, like, a panini machine, 
then it's probably me. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Staying through the stream, chatting with me. And I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. Bye. <laughs>